Some bar graphs and histograms are roughly bell-shaped, with a peak in the middle, and the bars spread, spread out evenly on both sides. And sometimes we use smooth curves to approximate the shape of these distributions. In fact, many distributions are shaped this way. For example, the weights of newborn babies. In statistics, we use normal distributions to model these patterns. A normal distribution is symmetrical and bell-shaped. People even call them bell curves sometimes. It is commonly used in various fields such as finance when analyzing stock prices, psychology to describe personality traits, industry when doing quality control, and of course in statistics to interpret large amounts of data, make predictions, and solve complex problems. In this lesson, we dive into the world of normal distributions and discover their importance. First of all, the mean of a normal distribution is always equal to the median, so it is in the middle. We have an abbreviation for the mean, and that's the Greek letter mu. And in fact, the mean, median, and mode are all equal in a normal distribution. So the mean weight of newborns is 7.5 pounds. That's the number in the middle. Instead of telling us a quantity, normal distributions show us probabilities. In a normal distribution, the area under the curve for an interval tells us the probability of getting a result in that interval. Okay, so in a normal distribution with a mean of 49, what is the area under the curve that is left of 49? Let's make a quick sketch. So here's my normal distribution. The mean is 49. So I'll put that right in the middle. Now, 50% of the data is to the left of 49, and 50% of the data is to the right of 49. Now, the area under the curve is a probability. And when we have a 50% chance of something happening, it has a probability of 0.5. So we could say area equals 0.5, because 50% of the data is to the left of 49, and 50% equals 0.5. Here's another one. In a normal distribution with a mean of 97, what is the total area under the curve? Right, so here's our normal distribution with a mean of 97. Now, 100% of the data is under this curve, so the area under the curve equals 1, because 100% equals 1. Now, normal distributions that are more spread out have more variability, so their standard deviations will be larger. Remember, standard deviation measures spread, measures how spread out the data is. So here we have two normal distributions graphed, and we're wondering which di distribution has the greater mean. All right, well, the means are in the middle. So this mean looks like it's right around here. I'll put my Greek letter mu there. And this mean is right here. So distribution B has the greater mean. Well, which has the greater standard deviation? Uh, once again, standard deviation measures how spread out the data is. Well, in distribution B, this data is kind of clumped close to the mean. But in distribution A, the data is spread out quite widely. 
So distribution A has a greater standard deviation. It's more spread out. Okay, that brings us to the 68-95-99.7 rule. So it turns out that in a normal distribution, about 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean. About 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean. And about 99.7% or almost 100% of the data falls within three standard deviations of the mean. So once we've gone three standard deviations away from the mean on bo in both directions, we've captured almost the entire distribution, or almost all of the data. Here we have a graphic showing the 68.95.99.7 rule, which is also referred to as the empirical rule. And notice we have the mean mu in the middle, and when we go one standard deviation to the right and one standard deviation to the left of the mean, we've captured 68% of the data in that distribution. When we go two standard deviations away from the mean in both directions, then we've captured 95% of the data. And once we've gone three standard deviations away from the mean, we've almost captured 100% of the data. It's 99.7% of the data. Okay, so when we have a normal distribution with a mean of 63 and a standard deviation of 8, what percentage of values in the data set lie between 47 and 79? Okay, in a problem like this, first we're going to sketch a normal distribution with 63 in the middle. Now the standard deviation is 8, so we're going to add 8 to 63 and subtract 8 from 63. All right, so 63 plus 8 is 71. 63 minus 8 equals 55. So we've gone one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the mean. Now those aren't the numbers we're looking for. We're looking for 47 and 79, so let's keep going. So we'll add 8 again. So we'll add 8 to 71. So that'll be 79. Well, notice that's that number we're looking for. And when we subtract 8 from 55, we get 47. And that's the lower bound we're looking for. Okay. So we moved, so we went two standard deviations to the right and two standard deviations to the left to get to 47 and 79. Well, when we've gone two standard deviations away from the mean, we've captured 95% of the data. So what percentage of values in the data set lie between 47 and 79? 95% because the 68, 95, 99.7 rule tells us that 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. Okay, now we have a normal distribution with a mean mu of 63 and a standard deviation sigma of eight. What percentage of values in the data set lie between 55 and 71? Okay, so same distribution, let's make another sketch make our bell curve with 63 in the middle once again. So when we add one standard deviation to 63, that'd be 63 plus eight, that gets us to 71. And that's one of the numbers we're looking for. And when we subtract one standard deviation from 63, it'd be 63 minus eight, we get 55. And that's the other number we're looking for. Okay, so we went one standard deviation below 
and one standard deviation above the mean. And according to the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So what percentage of values in the data set lie between 55 and 71? It's about 68%. Okay, same distribution. We have a mean mu of 63 and a standard deviation sigma of 8. We're wondering what percentage of values in the data set lie between 39 and 87. Let's make another sketch. Once again, we have 63 in the middle. And let's go ahead and add 8. That's what the standard deviation equals. So we'll keep adding 8 until we get out to 87. Let's see, so 63 plus 8, that was 71. We add 8 again, get 79, but we're trying to get all the way to 87. So we add 8 one more time, and we get out to 87. Now we'll subtract 8. 63 minus 8 is 55. 55 minus 8 is 47. You need to keep going. 47 minus 8 is 39. All right. We want the percentage of values in the data set between 39 and 87. Well, to get all the way up to 87, that was one, two, three standard deviations. And to get all the way to 39, that was also three standard deviations. And according to the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, when we go out three standard deviations from the mean in both directions, we've captured 99.7% of the data. So what percentage of values in the data set lie between 39 and 87? Well, about 99.7% or almost 100%. Here's the different situation. Suppose the weights of watermelons are normally distributed. If 95% of the weights are between six and 18 pounds, what is the best estimate in pounds for the mean and standard deviation. So we need to find both the mean and the standard deviation. All right, so they told us we have a normal distribution. Let's go ahead and make that sketch. They don't tell us the mean though. What they do tell us though, is that 95% of the data is between six and 18. See, that's most of the data. All right, so we have six and 18. All right, the mean will be in the middle. So to find the mean, we can add six plus 18 and divide that by two. So we're finding the average of the six and the 18. So that would be 24 divided by two, which equals 12. All right, we just figured out that the mean of this di distribution is 12. Okay, so because that's halfway between 6 and 18. All right, now to figure out the standard deviation, we need to remember that 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So that means when we went out to 18, that was two standard deviations away. So we needed to find what's halfway between 12 and 18 and that will tell us how far away from 12 we need to go to go one standard deviation away. Okay, so we can do this in our head or we could do 12 plus 18 divided by two. And that would be 30 divided by two, which is 15. So halfway between 12 and 18 is 15. Let's go ahead and do it on the other side also, just so we've done it on both sides. So let's figure out what's halfway between 6 and 12. All right, so 6 plus 12 is 18, and 18 divided by 2 equals 9. So halfway between 6 and 12 is the number 9. Okay, so if 18 is two standard deviations from the mean, that means 15 is one standard deviation away from the mean. And... To go from 12 to 15, that was three units, because 12 plus three is 15. 
so the standard deviation must be 3. All right, so the mean mu equals 12, that's what's in the middle, and the standard deviation sigma, that must equal 3. So just to review, we knew that 95% of the data was between 6 and 18, and the 68, 95, 99.7 rule tells us that 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So 18 was two standard deviations away from the mean. And halfway between 12 and 18 is 15, so that must be one standard deviation of the way away from the mean. I hope you have found these examples about normal distributions helpful. This is Mr. Ela, signing off.